Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, it really does come down to 10 days as far as a long-term investor. And there was an article that I never forgot about, and it talks about how Bitcoin historically generates its yearly gains in 10 days. And we're just gonna take a look at this uh, nice little piece of information. And it really does hit home if you were a long-term investor and if you've uh, done some funny things along the way as far as uh, trading, crypto, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So we'll take a look at that on top of the fact, of course, we have to talk about the short squeeze that is going on because we just went up massively in 24 hours. So I wanna thank all the traders and the, and the uh, people who thought that they were smarter than the market and who got liquidated. Uh, it sucks, but uh, you know what? You guys drive the market higher. So uh, thank you. And then uh, also want to take a look at uh, a little bit of, of some negative news as we see that executives at Tether, world's third largest crypto, reportedly face criminal probe for misleading banks. I know people have been talking about uh, Tether for quite some time now, but uh, this takes a little bit deeper look into the history of Tether, not what it is actually backed. And then finally, we're going to take a look at uh, some other kind of bad news is that uh, Ethereum EIP-1559, the triple halving, may be postponed until potentially uh, early 2022 going into uh, 2023. So we'll take a look at all those uh, articles and things that are going on. But first, let's take a look what's going on the market. So, hey, it's a great day. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty good day. Look, we hit $1.6 and we were flirting with like $1.2 1.22, somewhere around there, a trillion market cap. And in 24 hours, we are up 12%. So it's one of those things where I know people, I mean, everybody thinks that they're smarter than the market, even me. I mean, let's just, let's call a spade a spade. I think, I think that, uh, you know, sometimes I can get ahead of it. But when I try to do a lot of, you know, different crazy things out there, which I don't really do too much, honestly, it doesn't end up working out for me. And uh, it just seems like sometimes the most simple things that you can think about are the ones that actually work the best. So just real quick, we'll take a look at some prices. Uh, Bitcoin itself uh, is up uh, pretty massively. We're at uh, 38,000. At one point it hit 40,000, but then it uh, it uh, ticked back down. So we're up 13% 24 hours. Ethereum's up, Tether, some people care apparently. Binance coin, everything's up. 11% for Dogecoin, watch out. 10% for Polkadot, where's XRP? 9% for XRP, watch out. <laughs> at Cardano, 8%. 17% for Chainlink. Wow, 17%. Polygon, 19%. So now, all those times when people were buying the dip, hey, it's a good day for you. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. If you want to take a look at uh, some projected ranges, uh, take a look at Trade the Chain. Link's in the description. And we're looking at between, with 90% accuracy, negative 1% to plus 32%. What is this? Linear, Injective Protocol, Origin Trail, or, yeah, Swiss Board, Alpha Finance, Audius, Vthor Chain, and ZeroX. So, uh, take a look at those. Let's just uh, let's get away from what's going on uh, in these little little subsectors. Let's break into the, today's what I call the top story. And it's just a great reminder, 10 days. And to me, as a long-term investor, I mean, it really does hit home because a lot of the time it just kind of sucks. And, and sometimes that there's it, everything just moves sideways and it's very boring in the crypto market. I know people are like, they like exciting, you know, Either way it goes. Me personally, I think it's exciting when things move sideways because for me, those are the great days to dollar cost average. And then uh, this was an article I never forgot about. Uh, 10 days is really where all the gains come from Bitcoin. This is an actually old article, 2018. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just take you down a trip down memory lane and hopefully it'll hit home with you. So Bitcoin generates all of its yearly performance gains within just 10 days, miss those 10 days, and your average is 25% down annually since 2013. Tom Lee from Fundstrat uh, had this interesting statistic and he has this nice little graph and it kind of lays it out. In 2013, if you would have taken your Bitcoin out for a specific 10 days when all these days were like the most gains, you would have been out like 200% plus. And if you would have left it in, you'd have been up 660%. In 2014, 76. In 2015, 84%. In 2016, 101%. And in 2017, 1,136%. Wow. And those are just the days where like, you just, I mean, think of it, 10 days, 355 days out of the year, you're solid, and then you miss these 10 days and you're out that much percentage. So I know when people talk about like, I swear, I think people are trying to make things more complex than what it is. 
because then people will buy into their program or do whatever that you know they're selling and and they're like i can make you a million sure you can pal and uh to me it's just like it's like warren buffett you know he just says you know if you if you're not going to try to like super superly superiorly outperform the market just get into an index and just be a long-term investor and uh off you go now you don't have to do index here with crypto i mean you just buy and hold some of the top ones and on this channel not investment advice just investment opinion i can't give you any advice i'm just telling you what i do and i just dollar cost average and hold and that's really what it comes down to and then 2018 70 percent so uh again this is a it's an old article but i think it kind of hits home to what we're trying to do here which i know people again uh it's funny because like when when the market is all over the place and people just think that they know they're like, oh, I know where it's going to go. And and some people, I mean, they're pretty good at it. I'll be honest with you. But for the majority, you're awful. You're awful at timing the market. You're awful at predicting things. You're just not that good at it. And I hate to say it to you, but someone's got to tell you. And uh, <clears throat> in all honesty, if you're sitting right there today and you're like, shoot, I shorted this or I did this and I should have done this, then just take it. And again, I can't tell you what to do. But just take a real step back and go, what works for me? What doesn't work? And is this in my best interest to keep doing these types of things? Is this my best interest to, to do leverage plays at 100x or 50x? It is, is my best play to keep shorting or you know even do, do longs or whatever else it is? Maybe it's just uh, time to take a deep, hard look at just being a, a boring, simple, dollar cost averager investor. Can't tell you what to do, just tell you what I do. And that leads me uh, to my next point as we've closed out talking about the 10 days is the short squeeze. And I think this is really what it comes down to is that a lot of people, I mean, behind the scenes, I hear things. And I hear a lot of the people that are in the public eye, they will say one thing and they will do something different and they will talk about how great a specific asset is. I won't name that asset. And they will short it like crazy uh, behind the scenes. And I just think that's so unscrupulous to do. And I don't know why people would do that. Uh, first of all, I don't, I just don't think it's gonna work out for me. So I don't, I don't short and uh, seems to work out for me in, the, in that regard. So here's what's going on right now. Uh, there was two big things. First of all, uh, rumors of Amazon expanding its crypto asset presence sparks FOMO. That's why we see like this uh, big run up. But again, really what happened was there's a ton of shorts. Bitcoin shorters, people who short, lose their shirts in liquidation land. Uh, Bitcoin News reported on a possible short squeeze on July 12th when Bitcoin shorts were starting to stack up. And again, people were like, look, we know exactly what's going on in the market. We know that Bitcoin's going, and you've heard these people, you've heard these people, they're like, Bitcoin's going to 26, Bitcoin's going to 20. Even I, look, even I said, if Bitcoin does go down, it might go on 26, but it'll rebound. I true, I did say that, I did say that, but I'm not going to be here like, I'm going to short the market at 26. I'm just like, if it goes down, it goes down. I think the worst one down was like 28. So uh, it wasn't too, wasn't too bad. But uh, some people are like, it's going to 20. It's going to 18. And you got uh, even uh, uh, Guggenheim CIO, Scott Menard. He thought it was going to 15,000. And uh, hey, year's not over. Who knows? I have no idea. But uh, these people were like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to short the mark because everybody says it. And what happened is in a very short amount of time, you had uh, over $1 billion worth of uh, people get liquidated on their shorts. And, and just as a quick recap, shorting is like, hey, I think Bitcoin's going to 20K. Okay, well, we're going to give you, uh, you're, you're going to sell it essentially first. You sell first on a short. They're going to give you that, uh, that money to you. And they're like, you know, give us back our Bitcoin, uh, you know, if you want to short it down below a certain price. Sure. I think it's going to uh, 20. Uh, we'll sell it right now at 30. And uh, no worries. I gotcha. And then, of course, when, <laughs> when the price goes up, they're like, holy smokes, I owe this. Essentially, I always think of it like 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 a bookie. I owe this bookie like uh, like one Bitcoin. And uh, I told him I'd give him one Bitcoin, but I thought I was going to go to 20K, and now it's up to like 40K. I better buy some. And then people start buying, and they just get squeezed. And before you know it, the price goes way up. And that's essentially what happens because everybody thinks they're so smart. Eh, anyhow, so to, uh, to finish up this, this nice little story here, 
Other analysts and traders assumed this market play was in the cards. Close to 900 million in short positions were liquidated in a 12-hour time span as Bitcoin spiked 15% in value rather quickly. Who would have thunk it? Hasn't done anything for like two months and all of a sudden 24 hours, bam. Bybit data shows a great number of traders were wrecked by the short squeeze and 24-hour liquidation stats now measure $1 billion. And then this was interesting, Bitcoin's yearly cycle. The CEO at trading, trading bot firm Christopher Rude Feltkamp explained that all the market action is simply part of Bitcoin's price cycles. And it's amazing how like once we start to see these big fluctuations, people are like cycles. And before it, it's like those don't exist. Okay. And he states at a superficial level, the current bull run resembles that of 2017. Though that's technically absurd. However, if this continues, it would mean that Bitcoin should soon reach 50K again. He states the market has been consolidating for some time and an upturn was expected by many in late summer or early September, as this is part of Bitcoin's yearly cycle. In addition, the decision by Amazon to hire a crypto team and Tesla accepting Bitcoin again have given the necessary spark to fire up the crypto market once more. And here's the thing. Um, you know, analysts are out there and, and there's some good analysts. There's some good people with, with TA. And I like it how, how CJ said it over at Market Rebellion. Give that guy a follow uh, over at on Twitter. That's CJ Reichel. I'll put it in the description. But he says, he goes, TA isn't really that great for predicting where the where the market's going to go. He goes, it kind of tells you. He goes, but I use it more just to see where I can get in and out of, of uh, entry and exit points. And that's pretty much it. And uh, I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, you can kind of get there and get out. You can look at the MACD. You can look Bollinger Bands, look at the RSI and just kind of go from there. So I kind of agree with it uh, on that uh, level. But to predict where things are going, it's kind of tough. And nobody knows where it's going. Not even me because I am not Nostradamus. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece where we're talking about some bad stuff. Tether. What the heck is all this? So... Uh, we covered this yesterday, actually, and I'm so sick of the of the people asking me about it. I'm like, I'm just going to put a video out, and I'm just going to direct them to this video all, all the time. And we took a look at Tether, and it was a good one by Zero Hedge, an article that was written. And uh, basically, this comes out of this. If, if Tether isn't backed one-to-one -to, -one to the dollar, do I think that it's like 100% not backed? No, I don't. I don't think that they put zero money in. Right. I think they put some money in. Do I think it's 100 percent? No, I don't. Do I think it's like 90, 80, 70? Yeah, somewhere around there. And uh, that's it. I mean, I, I honestly I, I think the tether worked a little bit fast and loose. But do I think it's going to crash the entire ecosystem of crypto and digital assets to zero? No, that's ridiculous. Do I think it could be a black guy? Sure. But first of all, you have to do an audit. And you have to go through, and me personally, I think they probably have enough cash flow and slush fund to kind of get this thing going for a while. If it is what it is, and it's like, you know, 40 or 30% uh, uh, back, but I don't think that is. I think if you had to, if I had to guess, I don't know, somewhere around 75% and they're, they're probably fudging the rest, but don't sue me. I'm just guessing. So here's what's going on in this article. And I wanted to read this article before I get a bunch of questions and a bunch of like, I told you Tether's going to, Tether's going to crash everything. It's not what's going on. Here's what's going on. Uh, and good job by Robert Hart, Forbes staff guy. Uh, did a great job here. Executive of Tether, world's third largest crypto, reportedly faced criminal probe for misleading banks. All right. So a years-long federal investigation is closing in on potential criminal charges for execs at Tether. What's going on? The Department of Justice is investigating whether executives at Tether committed bank fraud. Oh no. The DOJ is exploring whether Tether hid from banks the fact its transactions were linked to cryptocurrency. why they do that? Tether, which was launched in 2014, is tied to the US dollar to maintain a consistent value and still need banks to store and transfer, which some were reluctant to do. Why? Uh, Tether told Bloomberg it routinely has opened dialogue with law enforcement agencies as part of its commitment to cooperation and transparency. So here's probably why they had to fudge it with the banks. Because back in those days, 2014 or so, banks didn't like to deal with crypto. So they were probably like, nah, 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 it's not, it's not totally crypto. It's uh, some of the stuff in there. Some of the, and no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And they, who knows, they might have fudged a little bit and uh, they may have misled some banks so they could get into cryptocurrency. Here's a secret. I also do the same thing. And I'm, 
uh, with with one of my banks that I got rid of because they were asking me. I remember they they asked me in 2017, "Hey, are you using an exchange?" No, and uh, like okay, and <laughs> let me go through with it. Now I just use USAA. Love that bank. Uh, and this was a separate bank. I just got rid of them. So yeah, maybe they did. And then right down here it says. Tether told Bloomberg it routinely has open dialogue with law enforcement agencies as part of its commitment and cooperation and transparency. It kind of sounds like the mob when they're like, yeah, we all we also keep an open dialogue with the police because, of course, they're not doing the, uh, the, the greatest up and up thing. So here's the thing. This isn't about uh, Tether being not or, or not having uh, enough of the of the Tether cryptocurrency uh, uh, state to the actual dollar of what is supposed to be pegged to. That's not what they're saying here. They're just saying that Tether back in the day may have misled some banks. So what will probably happen? There'll be a very long investigation. It'll be very pricey for Tether, I would assume. And then they will probably pay a fine just like all big banks do because nobody goes to jail when you have a bunch of money. Sorry, that's just how it is. And that's probably what's going to happen. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Now we're still waiting on an audit from Tether. Um, but again, there was an audit before, seemed to be okay. Is it on the, on the perfect up and up? Eh, probably not. But uh, again, when we talked about this in yesterday's video and I was talking about Tether, if you're so concerned about Tether, uh, just do the entire market a favor and just get out of Tether. I know people are like, well, I can, I can only stay in Tether in my exchange. No, you can't. You can, there's a, I guarantee there is an alternative to a stable coin to whatever it is, D USDC, die uh so there's some other options you can just put into cash if you really want to and uh and if you don't like it then just get out because in, in my opinion personally i never use tether ever uh i use voyager all the time which is i just i just use usdc usd is backed by circle it's also was, was picked up by visa so i will just use that and i just don't have a, a worry about things crashing to the ground and going ah we weren't uh you know we weren't at net actually uh, a pegged anything and we're you know 70 80 percent or whatever else it is so that's just my two cents don't have to do what i do this is just investment opinion not investment advice let me understand the comment section let's get on to our next piece which kind of a bummer but uh maybe it's not so bad anyhow uh ethereum triple having may be delayed because of security concerns, which I'm glad that they found this. So Ethereum London hard fork scheduled for August 4th, which was pushed back from July, something or other. Now it got pushed back to August 4th. Now we push back again, maybe delayed due to security concerns. I have no problem with that. I'm glad they're pushing it back. The improvement proposal 1559 or EIP 1559 was discussed. Key to the triple having event. We'll talk about that in a second. Developers from the ETH2 research and development team stated that the merge is more feasible in early 2022 to be confident of finishing the required testing in time. What is going on? Well, the team, Ethereum team, found a bug in the code and fixed it. However, the hard fork may likely be delayed in case of further security concerns. Tim Biko, Bako, uh, we'll call him Bako, core developer of Ethereum, discussed what's next after releasing EIP 1559. He said that the transaction fees from the priority fee would be rerouted to fall on validators, not miners. And really what it comes down to is this, EIP 1559, people are talking about how it's going to reduce the fees. I don't think it's gonna reduce them that much. Really what it's gonna be, it's gonna go from the miners to the validators. That's great. There's gonna be a base fee. That's fantastic. They're going to burn the transaction fee, like 70% of it, which is even good because it'll make it uh, deflationary. But again, uh, if you wanna have a faster transaction, you're gonna have to tip you have to tip the miners, <laughs> which is not, sounds so weird. I'm going to tip the, the miners, like tipping my Uber. Like, hey, I want to get there fast. Go, you know, here's 20 bucks. And um, I don't know if it's supposed to really change the gas fees. I think it's still going to be kind of crazy. And that's what we got. So that is the first part here. So you know that that is what's going on. And then this little graphic kind of got me concerned because you're looking at going from proof of work to proof of stake. And as far as like sharding, you know, which is where they kind of like just separate every little, little part of, of Ethereum into a shard. Uh, you're looking at between 2022 and 2023 data sharding. And then EIP 1559 and all that stuff, maybe early 2022. So that's a bummer. Uh, but it did say the merge is key to the triple halving and most likely to occur in early 2022. What is that? Well, let me tell you what that is. And this does sound pretty exciting. So the triple halving, 
uh, is really EIP 1559 combined with the transaction of proof of stake is considered to be the equivalent of a triple halving. What is this? So the network update will introduce a base fee for transactions to be introduced in a block. Users who wish to prioritize their transactions will have the option to add a tip, like I was just talking about, or a priority fee to incentivize miners for including their transactions in the next block. The higher the tip, the bigger the chances for the transaction to be processed. If you don't tip, well, maybe it'll just take a longer time, much longer. EIP 5059 does not directly intend to make gas cheaper. The base fee will fluctuate by up to 12.5% after blocks are more than 50% full, which makes transaction fees predictable and transparent to prevent users from overpaying. Among other changes that result from the EIP upgrade, 70% of transaction fees on the Ethereum network will be burned. So that's what I was talking about, right? Will be burned, looks pretty good, and the rest of it's kind of yeah, whatever else is. So this is the, the part where it, it talks about the three halving events. And this was from some Twitter handle, Squish Chaos. And he says, with the EAP 1559 and the, and the uh, sharding or proof of stake, that is the equivalent of three halving events for Bitcoin because it is going to uh, drop sell pressure and people are going to hold on more, which is equivalent to three halving. So I'm like, debatable, very debatable. We will see. I know people are betting big on Ethereum for it to be the next big thing. And uh, I mean, I hope it is too, because I have a lot of Ethereum. I am biased. <laughs> but on top of that, I also open up, own a bunch of Cardano. I also own a bunch of Avalanche. I also open a bunch of, own a bunch of Solana. So whichever one makes it, I really don't care. I just want one of them to do it. And uh, maybe like I've said before, it's not gonna be a winner take all. Maybe it's gonna be a winner take a lot. And then, uh, Second place, take a big other chunk. And then third place, take another big chunk. Who knows? But uh, this, honestly, when you see these pushbacks, it's never a great thing. And it uh, seems to really not really bother Ethereum because the narrative out there is still people are gobbling it up. So we will see. But, um, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of different projects on their heels. And um, when you have these types of setbacks, in crypto, things move pretty fast. So we'll see if it maintains or it uh, flushes everything out. Anyhow, that is it for today. So look, I know it was a lot of information. A lot of things are going on. Uh, if you've made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like this type of video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are very time sensitive, all new stuff. And then uh, Dan Clips is more of the uh, advanced stuff, which you can find in the description. So that's it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.